So, um, actually, why don't you introduce yourself for the camera and uh, give us a little brief background for everybody at home. Uh, my name's Bob Powers. I'm a lieutenant with the Northampton, Massachusetts Police Department, where I've been employed for the past 20 years. And I have seven years of active duty military uh, time prior to that, born and raised here in Hampshire County, um, right in Northampton, right over the river. So I spent my whole life here, educated in Northampton, and I have a master's degree in criminal justice. Uh, instructor at the police academy where I've uh, been for the last nine years since I made supervisor. I'm married, 24 years accomplished, and I have two, two uh, very educated children. One graduate from UMass, and the son was a junior in high school currently. Okay. So just briefly, um, why, do you, what, why are you interested in the job and what makes you think you're the candidate for this job? Many years of police experience, uh, so understanding of the law and understanding of training and human nature um, has prepared me for this, as well as leadership. I feel I'm a very qualified leader. Um, I've been a student of that ever since I was in school, uh, the time I spent in the military, um, to understand people, to understand human nature, to understand what motivates people. Um, that It's easier to work as a team, it's easier to engage people um, than to, to drive them. It's easier to be part of a team. And I believe that that's important in policing. I think policing is a hard enough job to do uh, if everything's going perfect, and never mind when it's going wrong. And we can all certainly agree that these are currently tumultuous times, and uh, it can happen anywhere. This can spill over in any community. Uh, a city next door like Northampton, a town like Amherst, that's stuck in the middle is Hadley. So um, I'd like to be able to lead a, a department uh, as good as the one in Hadley, uh, make it better if possible, and make uh, the townspeople here feel as safe as they possibly can. Anybody else on the board want to jump in? I'll ask, I'll ask a question. Um, first of all, a very extensive resume, um, very impressive. Based on your years of experience, what would you say are three qualities of, of that you have to possess in order to be a, a highly trained and highly qualified chief of police. What would, what, what do you, would you be your three qualities that you think are very important for the position? I think that uh, anybody who's in, in doing this job at all or anything that they do needs to understand their own weaknesses and where they need to improve. Um, not letting your ego get in the way of who you want to be or who you need to be to be able to do the job. Recognizing that you don't have all the answers ever that there are people that you can reach out to that do, um, that if you form, have the ability to, and you form a team, that you're able to have the resources at your disposal to be able to get the, the proper job done. That could be roundabout more than one, Mr. West, but uh, personal um, traits would have to be uh, integrity. It would have to be somebody that, that believed firmly in themselves. I've uh, spent my whole life adhering to 13 um, leadership traits. And I've been asked in the past what I felt was the most important one, and I always felt that if you weren't honest, then none of the rest of them mattered. So uh, to be a person of integrity and to be a person that can be counted on. If they need somebody at 3 o'clock in the morning, you need somebody that's going to answer the phone. If you have an employee who's in trouble, you want a, a boss who's going to be there and recognize that and be able to take care of it. Uh, again, this is a tough job. I've got a lot of years invested in it. I can't where that time's gone, but uh, to recognize that uh, good mental health leads to good physical health, leads to a good, happy employee, and that's what you need in a police officer. Thank you. Hey, my next. I, I'm just thinking it's appropriate for the three of you to ask as many questions as you want. I'm sure that we'll think of something over here. John, do you have any questions? I just have one simple question for all, same question for all three of them. Um, if you're not uh, selected for this position, at some time down the road, if we created an assistant chief's position or a captain's position, would you be interested in a position like that? I would. Uh, a position that would elevate me to a point where I can employ more of my own leadership um, traits and skills and values is what I'm seeking to do. I mean, I have a job where I, I supervise a shift. I'm a shift commander. I have, I have two sergeants under my employment, 14 employees. And 
you know, we have a good team. Uh, I'm looking to be uh, the leader of the team. Uh, in my department, there's still two other shifts, and there's still people that I answer to. I'd like to be able to employ my leadership uh, traits and thoughts. But yes, sir, I would if you offered a deputy chief yeah. position. Thank you. That's about it. I, everything else is pretty well covered by the committee. You know, I, okay. I, I, really I hate to, I hate to sit this. here and yeah. recite what these guys yeah. have already. You know. but I'll, I'll throw mine in. Okay, so you talked about the fact that you 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 look at Hadley as being a very well trained and. Uh, very uh, good department. So what do you see as the, the strengths of the department right now? The strengths of the department is the amount of work that it's accomplishing with its limited resources of personnel. Um, the way things that they're going, investigations today, and uh, the fear of um, attack, not, not a major attack, but the job that has to be done and the uh, thoughtlessness that people seem to, to take with police officers uh, to, to push the envelope. and. Uh, to have officers on a department like this that are uh, engaged with the party houses and the traffic that's coming up and down Route 9 and to do it with the limited resources they have, the investigations that they're forced to do, uh, the white collar type crimes, the identity theft and the uh, fraud, credit card and the shoplifting. And again, it's a lot to ask for such a small police department. So then, <clears throat> you have, those are the strengths. What do you see as the weaknesses in the department? The weaknesses of the department, I think, right now would be the amount of supervision that it has. Um, it's hard to have 10 employees, two of them being sergeants, that are asked to actually be out there answering calls at the same time with their employees. Uh, I was asked at the interview panel would I be willing to take a call. I would jump at the opportunity right now to be able to get back on a cruiser and actually go out and do what's like being a policeman again. So I'm not saying that that's, uh, that's not, but that would be a weakness, supervision and being able to have somebody to uh, shift supervisors that, that answer to a chief, have a chain of command. I think that that right now would be the weakness of the department, the lack of it. So that, that being the weakness, how would you address that and want to try to solve that problem? Well, this is a, a question I've been really leery of um, answering while we go through this because it, it, almost everything involves spending money. And obviously no town running a budget that wants to talk about spending money, but it, it, I think it would become an issue. I think one of the first things would have to be looked at would be the um, the uh, payroll side of the department and see if it could be expanded. Uh, I think that there should be a chief and I think that there should be a senior sergeant or a lieutenant position deputy chief or captain if you will as administrative assistant and I think that there should be at least two supervisors, one on the e evening shift 3 to 11 and I would have one, I'd like to have one on the 7 to 3, 7 p to 3 a.m. shift. Not that that four hour space between three in the morning and seven in the morning, nothing happens, but for the last eight months for me on midnights, I found that that's kind of quiet. So that's what I would like, I think that uh, the department would benefit by, to have supervi uh, supervisors on each shift. The span of control would be uh, lessened. Each supervisor would be in charge of so many employees. So uh, there would be control and uh, accountability. Okay, <clears throat> let's go back to the strengths. You've told us what the strength is. Do you see any place where that can be, um, where that might be something you might want to, uh, the best way to say it is, is it too strong there? It might need to be adjusted a little bit in, in, in what you described as the strengths? The strengths of the amount of work that the employees are doing with the, the limited resources. I, I, I think to expand that a little bit, I think that uh, the way crime is being handled today, I think that it should be handled an investigator. I think it's hard for a patrolman to do deep investigations. It's hard for a patrolman to be answering calls uh, and try to be on the phone or try to be doing interviews. But I think the town would need somebody uh, set aside that would be an investigator uh, to handle that kind of stuff. Breaking up the employees over the shifts by by calculations. Uh, there's a lot of shifts to fill in a week with a minimum amount of employees. Uh, I think that that's why uh, we've got employees that are working a lot of shifts to fill openings. I think expanding on that would lessen the amount of uh, workload that these officers are facing. Maybe I'm to jump in and give me a break or? <laughs> I'll ask one of the questions that we asked. Um, in your opinion, what are the pros and cons of hiring an internal versus an external candidate? 
And it was a hard, hard question to be to go on because I know that you have an internal candidate coming through who I, I know is a good man. Um, hiring from within inside, inside, if there's been a problem that's been ongoing, it would be perpetuated, in my opinion. Uh, I've seen, I've been in places where people have been promoted to boss from inside, and it's hard for them to break friendships uh, with people bonds that they already have, uh, that the favoritism shows through. And again, the reason I didn't expand on this before was because I don't want to say that that is a problem with this particular gentleman. I don't know that it would be, but this has been my experience. To bring somebody in from outside, you're going to have the experience from a department that knows that they're getting a new boss. And if that boss can come in and establish what uh, the expectations are, what the town would be looking for as they move forward, and that in their new chief, I think it would be easier to bring the team on board be able to be progressive. They would understand that there's a new sheriff in town, no offense to the sheriffs, but the, the chief would be here and uh, coming in with a new set of goals and, and new uh, new guidelines, I think that would be important. Last one. Uh, given the fact that, um, and, I, and uh, you know, from the interview questions, I mean, we did talk about the budget a fair amount. Um, yes, ma'am. You did a good job uh, researching uh, the town report and everything. Um, so recognizing that you know there aren't always sufficient dollars to go around for all of the to meet all of the needs of the town of Hadley, sometimes we need to get a little bit creative. And I'm just wondering if you've thought about any possible ways um, without if, if it's even feasible um, to form partnerships um, to bolster the police force. Um, we've got UMass, we've got you know Amherst Northampton who have detective bureaus. I mean, what, do you think that would even be um, a possibility to stave off kind of completely building out our own department or? No, that, you know, that brings up an interesting thing because UMass we know is only busy during, very extremely busy during the school time. And there's some extremely intelligent, qualified people that work for the University of Massachusetts Police Department. If uh, they're right there um, come on our border, if we could employ um, members of their detective bureau to be able to assist us, that would be phenomenal. Uh, I know that they step over and help Amherst quite a bit. And uh, I had never considered in the past how close Hadley is affiliated with you know, the, the college, how, how much of the college spills over into the town uh, until I started researching for the, uh, to actually for the first interview, to recognize that, uh, you know, party houses or frat type houses uh, could just as easily and happily as they are over there. So, you know, I brought up at the interview using uh, instructors from each department in the area to save on the overtime of sending people to the mandatory training that's required by officers. I think training is extremely important. Uh, staying abreast, I think it's good for liability purposes. So to use instructors, the qualified instructors they have at UMass or Amherst or uh, from my own department uh, and the instructor qualifications that I bring in, I think to be able to do this stuff in-house or as a group, I, I think is a big money-saving issue. Uh, doing training in my own department, I know that uh, we put out a lot of money to, to, to maintain the standard. Um, one of the questions that was brought up at the very first interview was accreditation. Uh, moving towards state accreditation was something that I would extremely would really love to do. But I know that with that comes an investment of funds. There is money that would have to be spent in order to make that, uh, to, to receive accreditation. So, you know, I was leery of talking about the budget when you don't actually know, you know, what can be spent or how can you expand it, you know, what you can actually get from inside. But like we said about a weakness on the department, strength or weaknesses, I think you're asking an awful lot um, from a small group of people that are working now. Things are just growing. The 2005 plan for the town, they were recommending more officers then, and you were only at eight and two then, and the chief. So it's nine years later. Where? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Tell us what type of experience you have with uh, special officers. Yeah, I don't remember very many specials in Northampton. Oh, uh, no, we, do have, we don't have a reserve program anymore since we dropped some of the service, but we do have special officers. So officers that are retired, officers that have left the department that have full time, and there are a few that um, we have a, a group of specials. There's 11 of them 
that come into work functions. So I would manage them to work um, the parades, uh, Shrag Shag Parade the, for the Halloween. Um, they would come in and work the um, Transgender Parade or the Pride Parade or the Veterans Parade. So all of those to be able to save money. Uh, I know that uh, Hadley has a part-time members of the department and they have an unlimited amount of specials uh, for the department too. So managing those uh, people I think is extremely important. Smith Vocational this year established their first year of a criminal justice program. Uh, one of our officers actually resigned from our department to, to go run the department. Um, Northampton hasn't been. I, I would like to be extremely involved in the, ex the Explorer post that Northampton had to be able to uh, recruit people to bring them up. I thought that'd be great for the town or intercity as well. Uh, Amherst, Hadley, um, the school. So we'd have a resource for, um, for people that would be extremely interested in being involved in law enforcement if we could collaborate with um, Smith Volk on this. So the new Smith Volk program is just like, tell me a little more about it actually. I'm just kind of they established it just this year. It's a <coughs> three and a half year criminal justice program that's, that's run at the school. Uh, again, it's a, a full-time, former full-time police officer that's running it, and they're getting police classes, forensic classes, and uh, training classes, and physical training classes, all the way through school, and then they're going to graduate. They're also doing um, college courses while they're in school, so they're actually bringing in criminal justice courses, so they're getting college credits while they're at the school. Um, I've been affiliated with it as their um, drill instructor. I've taught them, I've got them over to teach drill and ceremony, so I've tried to stay involved with that. To that program as well. So now we wonder why the enrollment in the vocational school is going up. Yeah. Yeah. Good for them. Yeah. But I think they've done a real good, that's my alma mater, and I've been proud of what they've done at the school over there because they've grown. I mean, uh, the, the bottle body shop last year went from three people to 11 students this year. So uh, the school is has done a really good job, I think, and I, I, I want to see it succeed, obviously. It's been a while since I was there, but <laughs> I do want to see it. Uh, Thrive, and then this new program. I was involved with the establishment of it, the criminal justice program, and so far it's doing extremely well. So, did you guys talk much about the dispatch situation and the possibility of regionalizing dispatch in Hadley? No. <coughs> no. So let's let's ask a hypothetical question then. Um, we have our own dispatch center here. There's talk about regionalizing services throughout the Commonwealth. Uh, what would you look at if you were asked to look at regionalizing the dispatch in Hadley? Can we get the dispatch from Hadley on into the state? Out of the, the, uh, the people that dispatch out of the state police? Th that's the first place that I would look. I know that small towns in the area, Hatfield and, and the other uptowns, uh, use the state police for dispatching. Uh, I've been a little spoiled in Northampton. We have a, a dispatch center that dispatches for us. So um, one of the things that I know it was in the job description for Chief was to manage the dispatch center. And when we talked about uh, working in cooperation with the fire department, that would have been one of the places I would certainly have brought the fire chief in. Uh, emergency dispatch dispatches for uh, all ambulance, fire, and police. So certainly they need to be able to understand how to dispatch correctly for each of the um, organizations. In order to, uh, to regionalize it, uh, I think that that was discussed with Northampton a while back too. Uh, I wasn't on the floor to be able to understand fully what, what they were doing with it, but certainly that's something that could be researched. If UMass, Amherst, and Hadley were able to have one dispatch center all in conjunction right here. And there's other small towns that could be immediately brought on too, Pelham and so. What would be your concerns having your own dispatch center and regionalizing? My concern with dispatch is to make sure that you've got dispatchers that are getting the proper information, dispensing the proper information, and having proper training in 911. So to ensure that if we went to something bigger that the town didn't get left out or the town didn't get shortchanged, that would be my biggest concern. Okay. Anybody else want a question? I was actually going to, uh, because have Mike in my peripheral vision, I was going to ask uh, him to talk a little bit about his views on public safety, you know, and the and cooperation with um, 
the fire department, I think you already touched on it a bit, but if you want to expand on that a little bit, I know that there were a handful of questions during our interview process about that. I think it would be beneficial for the board to hear. Yeah. As much as, again, as I instructed that I'll, I'll pick on, we'll pick on the fire department as a, uh, it's an invaluable resource, and certainly they have an important job to do, and it's far more difficult the job that the Hadley Fire Department's doing as a non-call department. I mean, you're, if anything occurs, you're getting people up in the middle of the night or away from their jobs to come in. So to be able to run an organization like that, I give the chief a lot of credit. It's a lot harder than dealing, I think, with employees that you see every day on a full-time basis. Um, every cooperation should be given between the police and fire. The committee that I belong to in Northampton, when I first, uh, almost 18 years ago, when I was a traffic officer, uh, one of the issues that we had was uh, button heads with the fire department with the, on the street and them covering up evidence or destroying evidence and, and, and had the committee put together so that uh, dispatch and fire and police all were on the same page and giving classes uh, jointly with the fire department, the fire department sharing ICS information with us and I gave classes to the FD so that they could understand you know, what we'd be looking for at an accident scene or at a crime scene, uh, evidence that we wouldn't want destroyed and uh, I feel uh, it uh, made for a great connection between our own FD and PD in Northampton so that all these things were alleviated. Uh, then you'd find police officers and firefighters talking on scenes and not socializing and not get the work done, but it, to a point where there was no more, uh, that animosity didn't exist anymore. And it's certainly something that shouldn't be tolerated. Emergency responders are getting paid for by the taxpayers of the town. We're there to serve them. You guys have worked out that animosity issue? Yes, other than the joking. We worked out the animosity. There is no more. Okay. I remember it was quite violent sometimes, actually. Um, all right. Any other questions? But I'm just going to ask you if you have anything, anything you want to ask us real quick. Ask, no. I just want to say that I do all really pre appreciate the process, the, the committee that got together, and the amount of effort that the town has put in to doing this and picking a chief. Uh, one of the questions that was asked at the very last meeting we had was on the study that was done. The, um, one of the things they mentioned was they didn't feel that people were treated fairly in the farmers. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about equality. Uh, there certainly doesn't appear to be any favoritism in this, and it certainly uh, it feels honorable to be part of this process, the way it's been run, to, to know that I'm sitting here with, uh, I believe, as fair a chance as any one of the other 24 that entered the program. So I just want to say that I appreciate the time everybody invested in it, and that I'm honored to, to be able to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Hadley's really, really unique. It's Route 9, like Northampton, and as soon as you get off of Route 9, you're back into the rural setting, you know? No. It's still I, a small town. I, I said at uh, the very first meeting when I said I was born and raised in Hampshire County, I mean, I, I did drive as an 18-year-old up Route 9 when it was nothing but a two-lane road until you got to the oasis of Mountain Farms Mall. So I've, I've, seen the, I've, I've seen the town grow. I've seen Amherst grow, and I've seen a lot of change here in the last 30 years. And I understand how, how the 5200 in town would feel about Route 9 and Route 116 and what, what UMass is. That 5,200, that core value that's in Hadley, that would be the most important thing to me and to the department I would run. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's an average of 40,000 cars a day that go down to nine, you know. So. Yeah, there should be 10,000 citations. We <laughs> <laughs> could probably easily do that if we had the ability. <laughs> yes. Good. That's all right. Thank you. Can Thank you, you want me to wait? Or? Um, do you? Do we want the waiter? No, oh, it's going to be a while. Yeah, it will be a while. No, if you want it, it's a big deal. I just didn't know if it was something that was going to be announced tonight or if we'd be able to get in touch with you. We don't know yet. We'll okay. probably just yes. be in touch with you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for your service. Thank, Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. 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 Thank